Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Wednesday. It is April 26th. Let's check on the forecast. Sarah Spivey in for Justin. Good morning. Hey guys, good morning to you. You know what? Uh, today it's humid outside. It is very humid, but the aquifer has been enjoying a little bit of a drink of water over the last couple of days because of the rainfall. So it's up to tenths of a foot. And now in the pollen count, one thing I don't see on here are oaks. This is the first time in a long time we have not seen oak in the pollen count. Something to celebrate. Otherwise, molds, pecan, pine, and grass are low. But there are some areas Areas of showers out there this morning. Take a look at the radar on your screen. You can see that through Floresville right now. Well, pardon me, through Wilson County northeast west of Floresville along 181. We're getting an isolated shower there. Also seeing some isolated rain out near Hallettsville and Gonzalez. And it's really the areas east of San Antonio that have the best chance for any isolated downpours. But here in San Antonio, we'll be seeing a mostly cloudy and humid day. We're already going to be in the upper 80s by noon. And then in the afternoon, mid to upper 80s, rather 87 around four or five o'clock. An isolated shower storm can't be ruled out. But again, the better rain chances are east of San Antonio. Now we have shifted the Fiesta forecast a little bit, especially for Saturday of this upcoming weekend. So I've got a look ahead at rain chances. Storm chances start late tonight into early Thursday morning. For now, let's get a check of the roads with your traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos. Thank you very much, Sarah Spivey. And I think sunglasses may be a good idea if you're traveling along US 90. A couple's very bright and guess what else looks pretty bright? Traffic. You can really uh, see that things are moving along just fine over here in this department, but be on the lookout. We do have some incidents that we want to report on. So the first one uh, we're going to take you right in there. It's actually 37 northbound. As you see right there on our map, plenty of red, orange and yellow colors. We definitely don't like to see, but uh, this is due to a crash folks. As you approach East Houston Street, remember to slow down. Watch out. No word yet on any injuries, but we're watching it closely and hope everyone is doing OK. Let's take a drive over here now to a big incident that uh, really was causing some issues uh, for people in the area. A train crash. It was reported near FM 78. This is just near Cibolo. Let's head now live to Katrina Weber, who has the latest information. Katrina. Well, good morning, Stephen. Yeah, this continues to be a problem at the railroad crossing FM 78 and Country Lane. But right here, it uh, looks like things may be starting to change. Now, this was uh, an earlier accident involving a big rig and this train that you see sitting on the tracks. This is still blocking, as I said, the crossing. Uh, you can still see the damage on that yellow car. That was the front car of this train when it happened. But they brought in this red one, and it looks like they're about to take off right now. Let me give you a look at the video from what happened this morning. This was before dark when it happened. Uh, the, we spoke with the driver of the Big Rig. She says that she was trying to go across that railroad crossing by Country Lane and FM 78. Well, she had a heavy load. It got hung up on the tracks. And when she looked up, she saw a train coming her way. She woke up her husband. They quickly jumped out of their Big Rig. And then the train came and plowed right into their Big Rig, sending it probably a good 100, 150 yards down the track. Uh, they were in the process of towing a truck to a local quarry, but uh, that did not happen. They are now stuck here. They're from Oklahoma, and they're trying to figure out exactly how they're going to get home. But again, the train did uh, sustain some damage in that crash this morning, and that train now is starting to move down the tracks here, so we could see that railroad crossing open pretty soon. But as far as here on FM 78, it's never really been an issue. They did have one lane closed, but traffic the whole morning has been slowing. Reporting live in Cibolo, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. In the new morning headlines, an odd request from the defense attorneys of that suspected killer of four college students in Idaho. And Dr. Anthony Fauci is doing a lot of explaining and defending these days. Plus, Mother Nature may be your next heater or AC unit and a great day for dogs and their owners. David Sears is here with all of these morning headlines. Do you guys take your dogs to the restaurant when you go eat? Um, back in the day, I don't really remember doing that. If it had a patio, maybe. Right. I used to do this a lot when I was in Austin. There yes. were a lot of options, but I think San Antonio is getting there. Pat patio is the key. Yeah. We'll explain why in just a second. Interesting twist to the murder trial of Brian Koberger. He's the one who is being accused of killing those four college students. They were stabbed to death in their off-campus home back in November in Idaho. One of the survivors is Bethany Funk, the defense asking a Nevada court to force her to travel to Idaho and testify on behalf of their client. 
Koberger's lawyers say the survivor has information unique to her experience that is material to the charges. Her lawyers are fighting the request. For one, they say the suspect killer's lawyers have not said what they are looking for, and there was no hearing before the subpoena was sent, and that's required by Nevada law. Funk is one of two roommates who survived the attack. Dr. Anthony Fauci making somewhat of a press tour, talking to different media outlets about the U.S. response to the COVID-19 pandemic. One of his latest interviews was with New York Times reporter David Wallace Wells. Fauci says the country dealt with two major problems, conservatives and the country's health care system. He said political divide became wider because conservatives questioned vaccine mandates and mass mandates and their benefits, especially after Fauci changed his stance on masks. First, don't need them, then mask up. He also said that our health care system is broken and that led to problems and defended himself when it came to closing schools and businesses. He says he did not close one school or one business. He was just going by CDC recommendations. One of the positives, he says, was getting that vaccine developed in 11 months. The worst effect of the pandemic, we lost a million Americans to the pandemic and Fauci retired last December. Geothermal heating and cooling. Remember that phrase, it could be how you heat and cool your house in the future. The Biden administration encouraging more research into using that, natu that natural below ground energy to save money and reduce greenhouse gases. The sources are pretty common in Europe, but not here in the U.S. 11 communities are going to get funding to work on geothermal projects. They're going to work on it for a year and then a few ideas will be selected to continue the development. All right, we don't have the we don't have the the. We don't have the dogs, but I can tell you what it was. Okay. Tell me. So yeah, the just FDA give us both came out. They had some rules last year that they came out with, but uh -huh. then they supplemented those rules this year, and they say you can actually take your dog. It's safe to take your dog as long as you're sitting outside the restaurant. You can't take your dog inside unless, of course, it's a service dog. Yeah. But you, you, no emotional pets inside and, and no armadillos and no pot belly <laughs> pigs. You can't take those with you. Just your dog, but you can sit on the patio. It is safe, according to the FDA. All right, All right. we'll work on the go. rights of, of armadillos coming up. Yeah, I mean, well, thank well you. it is Texas, so you know, I'm yes, sure someone's got a pet armadillo somewhere. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, Niosa kicked off last night. The fan favorite had a huge turnout for opening night. And our Lee Wallman was out there yesterday and shows us how the party went while also testing some people's fiesta knowledge. Take a, take a look. Each of these was the first official Fiesta event, the one that started all. Niosa A, B, Battle of Flowers, C, Flambeau. Battle of Flowers. Okay, you get a prize, Woo! but still a cascarone. <laughs> Yay! Why do you want to case that medal so much? I mean... Is it because we're the best? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Never changes. The line will start right at five, and that's with our volunteers. And then it starts. They let everybody at five thirty, and it gets and it's nuts after that. Here since uh, for thirty six years. Oh my gosh, what keeps you coming back year after year? Well, year after year, it's always been just a tradition of coming out and spending time with my beautiful San Antonians, meeting everybody, being loud and fun, eating good food, drinking, having a great time, celebrating Fiesta. How many official Fiesta kings and queens are there? A9, B12, C20. C20. So close, it is nine. It would be so cool if they did it back in the 1800s, but I think the answer is 1971. Yo, that is your man! Genius. Viva Viva! I love the <laughs> that was Lee Waldman reporting. So Niosa continues tonight down a lot of Utah, but it's also happening also happening tonight, another San Antonio and Fiesta Classic. It's called Corneation. That's right. And a reminder, this is an adult-oriented and uh, satirical performance based on all kinds of current events and is another Fiesta favorite. So the performance starts at 7 p.m. and there's one at 10 p.m at the Charlene McCombs Empire Theater on North St. Mary's Street. So tickets range from $15 to $45. You can find all of this information on our website at kset.com. The awesome thing about covering Niosa from kind of a news standpoint mm -hmm. is all you got to do is take a camera down there and point it in any direction. And you can find a story. You'll find a story. Yes. There are people everywhere and everybody's willing to talk. Yes. It's awesome. 907, 71 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. She's been credited with helping her students succeed and helping her fellow teachers succeed as well with a little help in the technology field. Now, we're talking about KSET's Educator of the Month, and later in the show, we're going to introduce 
you to the Judson ISD teacher who we surprised with the award. But first... <laughs> The party continues this morning. We're taking a look at colorful headpieces. Take a look, rhinestones, flowers, and so much more at a unique contest. Who's behind this? Coming up next. Your 2023 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. My name is Renee Vasquez, and I am Reina de la Feria de las Flores for 2023. Viva! Meet La Reina de la Feria de las Flores for Fiesta 2023, Renee Vasquez. Renee is born and raised in San Antonio, so she's pretty familiar with the Fiesta scene. And since for as long as I can remember, we always had the best seats at Fiesta. My dad used to have a law firm um, on Broadway Street, so we always set up bleachers. There was so much food, and it was so much fun. Since as long as I can remember, I've been going to Fiesta. Getting to her position wasn't entirely linear. Like so many others the last few years, the pandemic put a halt on her royal destination. This was supposed to happen for us in 2020, but of course due to COVID, it's been a long time coming. But the good part about that is as we've had like a long time to plan, think about our message, and really think about what we wanted to do for the students here in San Antonio. As La Reina, Renee will visit plenty of schools as part of the Ray Fail Scholarship Foundation, aimed at aiding countless students across San Antonio. Renee helps students remember to always be in the present with the help from a little friend. Her name's Buzzy. She's a cute little bee with a crown on, and I take her to different schools to teach them how to be calm. And like my my saying is, be still and be present in the moments so that they learn how to enjoy what's going on around them. La Reina is ready for Fiesta fun, but she also doesn't lose sight of the underlying mission. The biggest thing is just helping build this party with a purpose, which is something I love so much about Fiesta and so much about being part of this organization is that we are able to do so much good for the community while having the best time. And I think that's something so special about San Antonio. I'm with you, Steph. That crown is legit. Right? Yes. Awesome. The annual Fiesta Hat Contest is back showcasing dozens of bold, beautiful, and bright hats. Our Tiffany Huertas joins us live from the Western San Antonio North Hotel in the Colonnade, where the Women's Club of San Antonio is getting ready to host their annual event. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, we're going to see different headpieces, feathers, rhinestones. It's just a big party over here. And women have been putting this together for months. So it's going to be an awesome event. We have Virginia, the president, and Peggy, one of the members. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Tell us about this organization first and about this annual event. Okay, we are the Women's Club of San Antonio, and we were founded in 1898. So we are celebrating our 125th anniversary. And we have very women who work hard and play hard and love and love the community and our fundraisers. And because we help people from all areas, we uh, support wings, we support respite care, we support uh, the volunteers uh, at, at the state hospital, and we also do scholarships. So it's really a fun, and it's a reason, a purpose for what we do. Perfect. And Peggy, tell us about what's your favorite part of today? Well, it's a party with a purpose. And of course, you know, we're always, Fiesta was started because of our island heroes, the Battle of San Jacinto, but we still party. We dance, we celebrate. Um, yeah, it's so much fun. Going into that room is just awesome. I mean, just, you're, you're going to see so many headpieces and it's just fun. And if y'all would, Join the Women's Club. It is just the best, one of the best organizations. Women supporting women. I women love that. Women supporting women. That's and, right. And tell us about your headpiece and the inspiration behind it. I bought this jacket and I thought, oh, we need to have something that will go with this jacket. And so these are the colors. So there's different shades of roses. And then this, all this imp, the beading is a dark green. So that's why we have the leaves in here. I love that. It's so beautiful. Oh, but these ladies are so creative. It's just wonderful. There's different categories in this contest, so right? We have eight different categories. Some like vintage, some like um, glitz and glamour, some small groups, large groups. And this year there's something special called Spirit of Fiesta. And our MC, Michael Quintanilla, is going to look at the whole audience. This is a surprise. 
Peggy, nobody's said, heard this before. They're going to go to the whole audience, and he is going to pick out the person to be the super best, the, the best one. And th we've never done that. That's going to be but so much fun. But we're celebrating our 125 <laughs> years. And everyone has their dancing shoes, right? Because it's a party and it's there's going to be music and dancing, right? Lots of music. Yes. Lots of okay. Music. <laughs> well, we're going to stick around to see a little bit of that. And we're going to bring that for you coming up on the Noon Show. We'll send it back to you. Thanks, Tiffany. I love the Fiesta fashion. I'm taking Absolutely. notes over here. <laughs> yeah, I need me one of those hats, I think. I know. All three of us <laughs> need one of those hats. There's a lot going on there in a good way. <laughs> Outside right now, this is what we call a... <laughs> A mix of sun and clouds, right? Yeah, the sun, sun cloud mix for us during the day today. Don't go away us, yet. So. We're not done with you. Yeah, you know, it is humid out there. That's the thing, though. It's yeah, very humid. It's very humid. Yes. Well, I mean, come on, Fiesta. It's, you know, April. Yeah. I mean, it kind of goes with the territory. We, but, but we we've were also, lucky Monday. But, right. Yeah. And we've also heard there's going to be a dip in that humidity at some point. This there week. is. In fact, tomorrow is going to be really nice. In the afternoon, we're going to have low humidity, very pleasant, all because of a front moving through. But that front tonight, may end up waking a few folks in the overnight uh -oh. hours. Yeah, we expect some storms. Let's go ahead, though, and take a look at what we're, what we're dealing with right now in the form of radar. We've got some showers out, especially east of San Antonio, closer to uh, Hallettsville, Gonzalez. You can see there's some shower activity going on right now near Hallettsville. Uh, we've got plenty of viewers out in Hallettsville. Let us know what you're seeing out there right now. It looks like just a brief heavy downpour going over Hallettsville to Shiner. And in Gonzalez County, we've got some isolated showers too. You know, Gonzales County was the only county yesterday that experienced a severe storm uh, in the afternoon. And then one lone shower trying to make it into Bear County, closer to Calaveras Lake, right on that 1604 uh, loop there nearer to Lone Oak. So I cannot rule out a stray shower today or even a stray storm in the later afternoon hours. But generally today is mainly just going to be a mostly cloudy and humid day. Take a look outside right now. We're already starting to see these morning clouds break up, so it's going to be even warmer than it was yesterday. 72 outside right now, still registering cloudy skies at the airport, but I'm telling you those skies are already clearing. It's 70 in Kerrville, 72 in Del Rio, 72 Creasa Springs, 74 in Pleasanton, and 73 in Gonzales. This is the part, though, that makes it feel a little icky and sticky outside. Humidity, dew points are near 70 degrees. This is a summertime dew point for us that we're getting here in April. So thankfully, all of this humidity will be swept away way during the day tomorrow, but it returns right again by Friday. Take a look at the future cast here as I take you through uh, right around noon and into the lunch hour. Again, east of San Antonio, that's where we have the best chance for some downpours. But as we head into the uh, later afternoon hours, we may even see an isolated shower or storm closer to the San Antonio metro area. The chance is only 20%. So uh, it is a low chance, but it's still there between about uh, about 5 p.m. and to the evening hours. So Nyosa, like yesterday, which had a brief downpour, that may be possible again, but for the most part, Nyosa is going to go off without a hitch. Then later on tonight, we see a cold front move through, and that's going to shake things up. We'll talk about that in just a second, but first I want to get you through your day today. Here's your KSAT 12-hour forecast. Warming up already will be near 80 degrees by noon, partly cloudy skies, and then again, a 10 to 20 percent chance for an isolated downpour. 87 for the high. We're going to be close to 90. It'll feel like that with the higher humidity. And then again, later on tonight, just a 20% chance for an isolated downpour. It's in the overnight hours that we'll start to see some storms develop. So a hot day generally for us. 87 in San Antonio, 86 in Pleasant and 93 in Catula, 89 in Del Rio, 82 in Kerrville and 85 in New Braunfels. All right, let's talk about that cold front arriving late tonight. This is a snapshot at 10 o'clock. Take a look at your screen as we head closer to midnight. We'll start to see some storms develop up in the hill country. And then in the overnight hours, those will move through San Antonio. We're talking 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. So while not everybody will see rain, I do think it's likely that everyone will wake up at one point to some thunder. So some thunder will be out there at times later on tonight, especially if you're a light sleeper. And then by early tomorrow morning, we'll still have some lingering showers out there, but things will clear out during the day, and it'll be a wonderful Thursday behind that front. So again, just to reiterate, it's late tonight, 
overnight into early tomorrow morning, potentially through the morning commute, that we will have that broken line of storms. Some of those could be on the stronger side, some smaller hail possible, but we'll be keeping an eye on things. And then during the day tomorrow, it's really going to be wonderful. Those skies will clear. It'll be 80 degrees with low humidity. Battle of Flowers looks a little humid in the morning hours with some clouds, but by the afternoon, it'll be nice and clear uh, with a high right near 86. Then this is the shift in the forecast that I want you to pay attention attention to Friday night storms could linger into Saturday morning. And so that's something you'll want to consider for King William Fair, those that's kinds right. of things. But we're going to be updating that forecast. We're still a few days away. My hope is that the rain will be in the evening on Friday night into Saturday. Uh, but you know, that's a hope and a prayer. <laughs> we have to deliver the forecast for you, and it does look like we could see some rain early on Saturday. Okay, well, we'll be prepared for all of it, but still hopefully all the events go on as planned. Yeah, that's what we're hoping for. Yes. Thanks, Sarah. 921, 72 degrees. And San Antonio, again, will be on the world stage next month as a major convention is headed to our city. When we come back, RJ Marcus will tell us about the event and why it is expected to generate more than half a billion dollars for our city. 925 next month, San Antonio's tourism industry is expected to get a big boost. The U.S. Travel Association's IPW convention is expected to bring millions of dollars to the city. IPW, or International Pow Wow, is the travel industry's premier international marketplace. RJ Marcus has a closer look at the potential impact of having the event here and the health of San Antonio's tourism industry. This is the Super Bowl of international travel for the United States. It's the most important meeting that we could ever host in San Antonio. San Antonio is set to go global by hosting one of the largest travel trade shows. IPW 2023 opens next month. More than 5,000 people are going to come to San Antonio, including more than 500 media from across the world. So it's going to be a great single shot to get San Antonio on the worldwide stage. It's another sign the city's tourism and hospitality industry is bouncing back after the pandemic. Visit San Antonio says the local hospitality industry had a $16 billion economic impact in 2021. That's about 93% of pre-pandemic levels. We've had two uh, corporate groups in the last couple of months that have come in, each with more than 6,000 visitors, and meaning more than $10 million worth of economic impact for the city. Visit San Antonio expects to be at full pre-pandemic convention levels by the end of 2024. Hotel occupancy rates are also back on track. Nearly 32 million people visited San Antonio in 2021. It is expected by the end of 2023, we should be back in total occupancy levels back to what we were pre-pandemic. So uh, slowly but surely, we're making a great comeback. And actually, San Antonio is making a faster comeback than other cities. And Visit San Antonio officials tell us that IPW is expected to generate over $600 million in international spending over the next three years for the city. That convention taking place here at the Gonzalez Convention Center from May 20th through the 24th. Reporting from downtown, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 927, 72 degrees. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including an introduction to our latest educator of the month. She's a middle school teacher for Judson ISD. One of the teachers that understands you, like you can tell her anything. She's a good teacher. She's very nice. She's a very good listener. To be honest, I think she deserves it 100%. We are going to share how she is helping her students succeed in the technology field, as well as her fellow teachers, when we come back. Educator of the Month, brought to you by First Mark Credit Union. She's able to relate to the students, and it shows. Students at Woodlake Hills Middle School say they look forward to their class with Monique Jackson. Monique is a CTE teacher or career technology and education teacher at Judson ISD, and our KSET crew had a chance to surprise her with this month's Educator of the Month Award. Perfect. Once you do that, go ahead and click join class. You're able to relate to the kids. So, I, of course, I can tell them the things that I went through and try to help them to not make those same mistakes. Just having fun with them, being able to sit by me, we have conversations. Raise your hand or give me a thumbs up if you've ever heard of Canva. CTE teacher Monique Jackson has been teaching with Judson ISD for 10 years, and she's been at Woodlake Hills Middle School for three years now. And in that time, she has had quite an impact on her students. She's one of the teachers that understands you, like you can tell her anything and like she won't judge you for it. She'll just like understand and try to help you through it. She's a good teacher. She's very nice. She's a very good listener. If you have any like problems at home or at school, 
you just come to her and she'll help you out with anything. Monique Jackson also shows her support to her students by going to their games. I like to come to some of the students' games when I can and just show that support. Sometimes they may not have mom and dad to go to those games, so I'll be there rooting for them and cheering them on. So it's also exciting for me as well. Yes, join your class through the email. Sign and Monique helps her fellow teachers too. During the pandemic, she created a YouTube channel to help other teachers with technology issues. And now she's running Wildcat News TV on a YouTube channel for her students. All reasons why she's being recognized as KSET's Educator of the Month. Congratulations! Congratulations. <laughs> I'm proud of my, my teacher. Ms. Jackson, my favorite teacher. To be honest, I think she deserves it 100%. She really tries her hardest and she's always prepared for her classes. And she knows how to organize her assignments very well. It's actually an honor and a privilege. You don't expect things like this to happen. You see it on TV all the time, but when it's you, it's like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> so I'm very grateful for this opportunity and blessed. As you can see, Monique was surprised. Congratulations again. And a, a shout out also to everybody there at Woodlake Hills Middle School that helped us surprise her on that day. So pretty awesome there. Uh, again, the school year is wrapping up, but go ahead and nominate your teacher if you'd like to. That's on our website there at ksat.com slash educator. Outside with live cam, a win-win situation. Looks like the oak season is over and Fiesta Week continues. Sarah's back with a sneak peek at our NIOSA forecast. Yeah, it looks okay for Niosa tonight, so really nice. You know, we had a brief shower yesterday during Niosa. It's going to be similar today, but still probably going to go off without a hitch. Take a look at your pollen count, though, today. This is the first thing that Mark was talking about. No oak in the pollen count. We've got molds, pecan, pine, and grass that are low. And as you take a look at your clouds and temperatures, those clouds are already starting to clear out in San Antonio. So it is going to end up being a mostly cloudy day with a few peaks of sunshine here and there. But generally, temperatures are already on the warm side. It's 72 in San Antonio, 75 at Port SA, 73 at Stinson, and it's 70 in Comfort. Take a look at your screen. There are some light rain showers on the uh, east side of town, east of San Antonio, right along Loop uh, 1604. Then near Cuero, Gonzalez, and Hallettsville, we've got some light rain as well. Chance for rain today is pretty low, only about 10 to 20 percent. Otherwise, it's going to be a warm day. High temperature in San Antonio of 87 generally will all be in the low to mid 80s for the high. And here's that Niosa forecast for you. Sunsets tonight at 807, only a 20 percent chance for a stray shower during Niosa. Otherwise, it's going to be warm and humid. Temperatures falling only into the mid 70s by midnight. So a pretty a mild Niosa for us tonight. But then later on in the overnight hours, this cold front's coming our way. It's going to bring us a broken line of storms. May wake some folks up in the overnight hours. I'll be walking you through that future cast coming up in a bit. Mark Steph. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says there may be other victims from similar incidents after a local Uber driver was arrested, accused of sexually assaulting a passenger back in February. 30-year-old uh, Luis Alberto de Leon Jr. was the man authorities arrested. Officials say he used to work as a Leon Valley police officer, but Leon Valley Police Department did not respond to our inquiry about de Leon's employment. Sheriff Salazar says anyone with information about this incident or other ones should call their office at 210-335-6000. The father of missing little girl Lena Kill has taken a polygraph test at the San Antonio FBI office, but we don't know the results. Lena, part of a family of Afghan immigrants living here, hasn't been seen since December of 2021. Her father says he wanted to take the test to clear his name and bring the focus back to finding his daughter. Lena was three years old when she vanished from an apartment playground here in San Antonio. Police say the case is still active. If you have any information, you can call the San Antonio Police Department's Missing Persons Unit at 210-207-7660. There is a dangerous trend at schools across the country, a spike in the number of fake emergency calls. As ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, new technology is one reason why this trend is increasing. This morning, a rise in so-called swatting calls has law enforcement on edge. The alert has been canceled and they're get, they're, they were getting an all clear from the OU campus. One example, an active shooter scare at the University of Oklahoma. Law enforcement swarming the campus, but it was all a hoax, a phenomenon experts say has at least doubled in the last year. 
Since last June, about 250 colleges and 100 high schools have received fake reports of bomb or shooting threats, causing chaos and confusion and forcing law enforcement to expend vital resources. Experts say technology, including artificial intelligence, has helped swatters, allowing them to disguise their voices and help make their calls untraceable. Technology is being used. You're using a voice over IP. So these are not, you know, old analog phones that are being used to call these in. This is all voice over the Internet. Um, it's all using AI and, and other tools. So far this year, at least 173 mass shootings have been reported nationwide. Combine that with a number of these fake calls and there's fatigue for everyone involved. So the main issue is not only is it a traumatizing response to the people in the building and the teachers in the building, but it also sort of ripples out. The FBI does not track swatting because it's not a categorized crime. Experts fear all these false alarms will prompt people to let their guards down, allowing an opportunity for something far worse to happen. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Americans seem more worried about the economy these days. Consumer confidence dropped this month. The conference board measures attitudes toward the economy and job market. People are concerned about inflation and jobs, and they expect things to get worse in the next six months. However, people are still willing to pay more for basics like diapers, burgers, and soda. McDonald's and Kimberly Clark reported rising sales despite higher prices. PepsiCo raised its revenue forecast with demand strong even after a 13% price hike. Many companies have been passing higher costs along to shoppers, but more and more analysts say Americans may have had just about enough. Home prices are up for the first time since June. They gained 0.2% in February from the previous month. A key index rose 2% from the year before, the smallest jump since July of, July of 2012. Western markets are seeing the fastest price drop, San Francisco being the weakest. Miami saw the nation's fastest price growth up nearly 11%. That's a ton. Right now, 939, 73 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. For over 13 decades, Fiesta and the Battle of Flowers Parade have fostered so many traditions for us here in San Antonio. So for some families, that can be simply coming out to watch the parade every year. For others, like this next story, that means helping put on the parade and making it as colorful as it can be. We're going to share that story in just three minutes. My name is Rose Garcia. I've been working for the Battle of Flowers, making flowers since 1970. I've retired last year. I've been working for 50 years. And I'm back to teach my cousin, Ashley, how to make the flowers and run the show. I had never really gotten into actually sitting down to making the flowers until I took over and then I'm right here with Rose right next to me by my side and I'm like watching everything she does, listening to everything she says. One, two, three. It's like you're rolling it. You're rolling it all together. Back in uh, 70, my mother was working, making flowers. And uh, my sister was working and my aunts, my mother's sisters. So it was a family tradition basically. Because it's been in our family for so long, I was like, I have to do this. It's exciting every year because uh, we work making flowers, different colors, different textures, and it's family that's uh, making the flowers there at the den. I never got to meet my grandmother knowing that my grandmother was there in the same building with the same tables, the same floor, the same windows, the same walls. I mean, it, it's an honor, it's a blessing. I, I love it. it. It touches me here because I'm in the same exact place where my grandmother was. You're gonna grab it right here, okay. like this. Especially if you're born and raised in San Antonio and you've been going to the parade since you were little and you've seen all those floats and you're like, wow, I wanna be a, a part of this as well by making the flowers and then showing my kids and my grandkids and these are exactly 
the way they make the flowers on the parade, you know, and the same flowers since they were kids. And then I just pinched it a little bit and then twisted. Ooh, that looks good. Compared to about 100 years ago, um, the flowers have definitely evolved. They have been able to make them easier. There was one lady that came in and she said her mother uh, used to make the flowers, but she didn't learn. So she walked in today and she started, uh, we started teaching her. And then knowing that we're part of the Battle Flowers and this is where we get our paper and this is how we do it, that just like, like, oh yeah, I wanna do it now. And you know, give them some inspiration and give them some ideas. I, I told them you could make them for birthday parties, you could make them for your school events. There's many ways you can use crepe paper. Yeah, they all have fiesta theme uh, events coming up, weddings. Uh, yeah, yeah. They were having an engagement party at the park and they were doing a fiesta theme. This is just part of our culture, part of our history. This is what we've grown up with. This is part of who we are and you want to keep that with your kids and your grandkids and pass it on from generation to generation. Somebody was asking me the other day, so what is this Battle of the Flowers thing you guys keep oh. talking about? It's like, uh, it's a parade, it's Battle of Flowers. Yes. I said, it's a parade so big, they shut, shut the sh city down for the whole That's right. day. All the schools. And I almost got in trouble saying that. I know, you did. <laughs> I, I'm glad you caught yourself. <laughs> shut the city down. Yeah. Oops, sorry, yeah. Sorry. Don't break the iPad either. I won't. Just I won't. say it's a holiday. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a holiday. Huge, so, I mean, but well, I can feel the anticipation yeah, building. Yeah, it's Absolutely. And speaking of the city, you know, we had that soaking rain Thursday, mm -hmm. and the river, the San Antonio River, it rose. This is the result of that. Take a look at your screen right now. Look at all of that trash there from the San Antonio River. I mean, it's acting like it should. It's it's getting all the water away from the city. But I'll tell you what, I was walking too or along the river and I saw little fish in the, in the taller trees there because of all the amount of water we got. Just a reminder that there really is no throwing away, is there? So let's try to do our part as we can. As we take a look at the radar, uh, we do have some showers out there, especially east of San Antonio. They're very light rain showers, uh, really originating from areas along the coast. You can see down near Hallettsville, Gonzales. We've got some near Cuero as well, uh, and even a light rain shower in eastern parts of Bear County. So it's really areas east of San Antonio that have the best chance for rain today, but we're still going to carry a 10 to 20% chance around the Alamo City as well. Outside right now, we're starting to see breaks in those clouds from earlier this morning. It's 72 degrees and we've got winds from the south at about 10 miles per hour. Humidity though is high. Dew points are in the 60s, upper 60s, 87% humidity. Here's a look at the clouds and the temperatures. Again, peaks of sunshine through the cloud cover here. 73 increases spring, 76 in Catula, 72 in Yavali and 72 in Del Rio. You know, it's so humid that once we get a little bit bit of sun, that sun acts as fuel and forms those clouds right back up again. Case in point, take a look in Western Bear County. It was sunny and now those clouds are back because of, of all of the humidity in the air. Speaking of, dew points are right near 70 degrees. This is a summertime dew point. It feels like a summer morning out there. And as we look at the future cast, notice that east of San Antonio, that's where we've got the best chance for rain today. In San Antonio, our rain chance is about 10 to 20 percent. But if you live east of San Antonio, you've got a much better rain chance, about 30 to 40 percent today. As we head into the afternoon, there is a possibility for one or two isolated storms. This is a look at seven o'clock tonight, close to sunset. So we'll be monitoring for Niosa around San Antonio, but I, odds favor a perfectly fine Niosa with any isolated rain remaining just that isolated. It's late tonight that a front moves through and then that brings a good chance for storms for all of us. We'll show you that front moving through in just a bit. For now though, take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. By noon, we're gonna be at 78 degrees. In the afternoon, we're gonna be in the 80s and partly cloudy 87 for the high today so it is going to be a warm one that'll feel closer to 90 degrees and then tonight only a 20 percent chance for an isolated shower or downpour it's not until the overnight hours that we see more widespread showers and storms highs around case uh, at 12 viewing area 86 in hondo 87 uvalde 82 in kerrville 85 in new Braunfels and seguin 93 in Catula, and 89 in del rio all right let's take you through that front moving through 
This is a look at about midnight. You can see that storms will develop near uh, the hill country, pushing south in the overnight hours. Some of these storms could be on the stronger side. Uh, gusty winds, maybe some small hail. Even though not everybody is going to see rain tonight, I think a lot of people may be bothered by some thunder in the overnight hours, regardless of if you see rain or not. That could linger into the morning commute tomorrow, but then by mid-morning, skies are going to clear, and it's going to end up being a really beautiful uh, Thursday for us. Clearing skies, low humidity. 80 for the high. Then for Friday, it is going to be humid. I think Battle of Flowers, the parade, may start off with some clouds. It'll be a bit humid, but it should go off without a hitch. 86 on Friday for the high. It's Friday night into Saturday morning that we have our next chance for storms. That may impact some Fiesta plans on, fr on Saturday. We will keep you posted as that forecast evolves. Otherwise, next week starts off fairly quiet and warm. Hey, speaking of Fiesta, meteorologist Mia Montgomery and I will be at Bob Mills, that's De Zavala and I-10, 12621 West I-10. That's Bob Mills. Lines are line for the medals is going to start at 4 p.m. Medals will be handed out at 6 p.m. We've only got 200 medals to hand out. Uh -oh. So the line starts at 4 p.m. And get there at 4, you'll get in line, you'll be guaranteed a medal at 6 o'clock again. Me and I are going to be there. We're so excited. We'll be live at five and six. We had a great time at our last medal giveaway I saw meeting that. people. Good turnout. Yeah, we'll see how things go tonight. We hope to see you out We're there. We're going to have a big crowd. It's going to be like yes. Taylor Swift or something. <laughs> yes, it will be. Whoa. And you're in a good area. How flattered am I? <laughs> the first 200 people. Yeah, yes. All get right. a medal. Nice. Exclusive club. Have fun. Six, uh, rather nine fifty one. Different, different show mark. Nine fifty one. <laughs> Seventy four degrees. We'll be right back. Um, so, Niosa continues tonight, but also happening tonight, another classic, Corneation. This is an adult-oriented and satirical, sorry, I'm laughing because Sarah's oh, dancing. Oh, sorry, I was cha to the it, it all fits, it all fits. The performance is based on all kinds of current events and is another Fiesta favorite. The performance starts at 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. at the Charlene McCombs Empire Theater on North St. Mary Street. So tickets range from $15 to $45. So you can find all this information on our website at KSAT.com. And right now on KSAT.com, we have everything you need to know and more about Fiesta and all the events happening this week. Uh, if you're really challenged with finding a website, we made it really easy. Uh, you scan this QR code <laughs> on your screen. It'll take you right to our KSAT, KSAT Fiesta. We call it a shortcut. Uh, you'll see the event schedules, parking information, and how you can watch all the parades, including the big ones coming up mm -hmm. Friday morning, Battle Flowers, and then Saturday night, Fiesta Flambeau. Mm -hmm. So excited. Second night of Niosa tonight. If you're planning on heading out, only a 20% chance for an isolated downpour. Otherwise, temperatures will be in the uh, 70s, so it is going to be pretty mild and humid. Late tonight, some storms roll in. Those could impact the early morning commute as well, but then tomorrow will be beautiful during the day. Friday Friday, Battle of Flowers, humid and warm, 86 for the high. Then Friday night into Saturday, it does look like we do have another potential for some storms that could linger into Saturday morning. You know what? What? Case that's your Fiesta station. Your weather authority is your weather Fiesta authority. Either way, we'll be watching you closely for the next few, yeah, yeah. next few days. I tried to do something cool there. It didn't really work <laughs> out. But.